Yeah, Demon, don't forget the rumba. Welcome back to the channel. This time we are doing something a bit different. We are doing a weekly wrap up because fam, this week has been crazy. It's been lit. Hello, May. How are you doing? But because we're doing something a bit different, I thought my appearance should be a little bit different. So what I'm going to be rocking is a blazer. All right. Uh, this is a little bit familiar to you guys. If you know, you know. Anyway, let's get into the show. Let's speak about what happened during this fantastic, lovely week. And yeah, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and let's get going. So, starting off this week, fam, if you don't know, now you know. Where have you been hiding under a rock? Lost at sea, lost in the mountains, lost in the desert. Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Aubrey, Drake, Graham have been going at each other. 1v1, mano a mano, who is the goal? <laughs> who is number uno? Who is number one? Honestly, guys, I don't even know where and how this beef started. Um, what I heard, right, from watching a lot of stuff online and, every, and everything, is that this all started when Kendrick dropped Control. Now, when Control dropped, your boy was in high school, fam. I remember when this track dropped, we all went crazy. Kendrick, how do you go on Big Sean's track and you start tuning everybody? How do you go after every single man in the industry that you don't care, you know? For me, it was after that day, I was like, oh, this guy's dangerous. This guy, Kendrick, is different. And at this time, I was a big Drake fan. Like, I used to love Drake. So I'm thinking to myself, like, Whoa, how is Kendrick coming after like everyone like this? But Kendrick said, you're paying homage to the random. He's paying homage the guys it's more like friendly competition friendly fire i'm saying where are you with, at with a lot of the cats now like the j coles of the world or, or yeah. drakes of the world where are you guys at same now? same place same place mm -hmm. it's all love from the that. moment i did the verse to after the verse you know what i mean i think hip-hop is is a sport so you're gonna have these little spits and spats and it's all good because personally i respect these dudes as you know as, as people you know what i mean so outside of that it's really nothing specifically where but one person did not appreciate that. One person did not appreciate the friendly fire. They took it quite personally. <laughs> but he's like, you know, he is the underdog that's extremely hungry, you know what I'm saying? Um, and and he's doing his thing really well. Um, and that verse was, he's giving people like moments, you know, like that, that verse was a, a moment to talk about. Um, are you listening to it now at this point in time? Okay, and then it was it was real cool for like, you know a couple weeks But like if I asked you for example, like how does that verse start? Uh. <laughs> oh, do you remember? <laughs> no, and like no, no. I, I'm a dapper. I didn't feel a way about that verse. I get it I get the moment like, you know, he's a good guy when and and like I know that that verse had no malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. So it's like he didn't come on there on some wild like, yeah, I'm in New York. Fuck everybody. Don't look at me. Now. <laughs> like I'm the king. So it, it, it was one of those things. It's like I almost wish he had come in there on that shit because I kind of lost like a little respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really fuck everybody, then it needs to be fuck everybody. It just can't be halfway for the sake of the people. But you know what I'm saying? Like for real, that's just how I feel. Guys, this is all alleged. All right. Alleged. I don't have money. It's all alleged. Thank you. So that's apparently where it started. And then from their point forth, they haven't really been seeing eye to eye, right? Now we know Kendrick came out with J. Cole and they shot first person shooter mode, first person shooter. What a song, what a track, what a track, what a track, what a track. And apparently, allegedly, right? Allegedly, Kendrick was invited to come onto it and he said, nah, I ain't doing it. And apparently for some reason I made him feel salty or something. That's what I've heard about on, on the internet. Again, allegedly, right? And then this caused, you know, some controversy between, I don't know, not controversy, but then that track came out, did a Mazza. We all know J. Cole was paying homage because that's what J. Cole is. J. Cole is that guy. So J. Cole was paying homage. He said, um, you know, we're the big three, like we started the league. So big three being Jake Hall, being Drake, being Kendrick Lamar. And we all know in the landscape of hip hop, these are the three guys, right? These are the three, like Jake Hall said, the big three like the start of the league. They are the face of hip hop. 
as I'm currently speaking, right? Of this current era that we're in, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, since when they started becoming big and started popping, they've been those guys. Till now, they still are those guys. So, yeah, they are essentially the big three. All of a Sunday, now this is how I experienced it. All of a Sunday, right? Um, Metro Boomin, one of Drake's former friends, who also produced with Drake sometimes, drops the album with Future. Also, one of Drake's friends, former friends, how it looks like, right? And Kendrick comes on there and is like, nah, dog, screw the big three, it's only big me. I'm like, whoa, Kendrick, hold up, bro. What's going on? What did you miss? How did we get here? What happened? What happened? You know? And that is what started everything. And, 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 and that was the big explosion that has now kind of started everything to where we are now. My two cents on this, um, listen, like if you told me, um, I had to, if you told me, right? It's like J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake, Kanye, whoever. Let me, say, let me, let me just keep it at the three. Kendrick, Kanye, Kendrick, J. Cole, Drake. If you told me between these three, right? I could only keep one person to stay alive and keep their music alive. Like the rest don't make music ever again. Bro, the person I'm keeping alive is Drake. Like, his catalog is just too much. Dude. Like, there's a song for when you're sad. There's a song for when you want to turn up in the club. There's a song for when you want to be with the broskies. There's a song for even when you want to feel, like, good as a mandem. When you want to, like, you know, feel sexy as a guy. We all have those days. We all have those days. We need those days, right? But for me, Kendrick's pen game is just too much. And to lose that pen game, to lose, to lose his lyricism, his writing, what he means for the culture is also like a big thing. But honestly, to me, like Drake, like musician-wise, justice. The talent is crazy. The talent is crazy, all right? I'm not a Drake fan like that anymore, um, unfortunately. Um, and even with Kendrick, I'm a fan, but not like, he's not my number one guy, you know? Um, I'm a J. Cole fan too. I like all of them, bro. Honestly, I just like all of them. And I wish I could all get along, but hey, hey. That's life, you know, things happen. So we are here now, right? These guys have been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And now it's going to the point where they have said like really deep things about each other, like really like hectic allegations, you know, from pedophilia to GBV to, yeah, yeah, to, to uh, your kid not being your kid to unplanned pregnancies, uh, bruh, bruh, bruh. It's a lot. And they're very deep allegations that are being thrown around. Now, to me, if I'm not looking at the allegation wise, I'm going like rap and like song and whatever. To me, Kendrick is up. Kendrick is giving me off the energy of like a battle rapper. Like, man came to battle. Man came to battle. And I understand that Pusha T, when he came after Drake, it was more of a thing of, I'm going to expose things that people don't know about you, you know? And I think that's kind of how majority of the public are not trying to see things. But when it's a like when it's like a rap battle, I don't think it's always about exposing secrets. Sometimes it's about just about like I'm looking at you. Like if you if you go up up against a battle rapper, right? Even go on YouTube and watch battle and watch battle rap. These guys will just stare at you, fam, and I'll be like, I bet, and start dissing you. That's essentially what Kendrick has been doing the most to me compared to Drake. I feel like Kendrick has been really battle rapping and dissing this guy more than Drake has been dissing him. You get what I'm saying? So that's what to me. To me, Kendrick is up. Kendrick is up. But honestly, guys, for me, if it does turn out, right? Now, of course, you can't ignore the allegations because they're very hectic and they're very in our face. Um, and again, these are just allegations. So we don't know how true they are. But um, as you're seeing, the internet is doing a lot of crazy things, a lot of digging up. You know how the internet is. Trust me. I know. But yeah, the internet is doing a lot of digging up. Please go watch Abbott and Preach's video. They break down the whole Drake stuff and the allegations around him. It's a bit hectic, but again, allegedly. And um, yeah, bro, so to me, right? Including the allegations, including the diss rapping and all of that. If it turns out that Kendrick is lying, Drake wins. If it turns out Drake is lying, Kendrick wins. However, if it turns out that they are both lying, J. Cole wins. And here's why I say this. J. Cole, 
entered the beef a little bit. But then he was just like, you know what, actually, listen, I'm choosing peace. I'm choosing peace and he chose peace, fam. He chose peace. He chose peace. So if it turns out they're both lying about these allegations, peace wins at the end of the day. Love wins at the end of the day. He was like, these are both my brothers. I don't want to fight them. I'm not doing it. So shout out J. Cole. I hope one day we can all be like you. We can all be like you. Anyway, into other news. <sighs> this week was a party homecoming for Kekeles. Yo, what a turn up. What a turn up, man. I know what of this. My kicker actually like called me personally. He was like, hey man, I want you to come through to my homecoming as a special guest. I was like, sure, bro, sure. And me and my kicker are cool, guys. Like, I know what happened in the house happened in the house. The drama, everything. But also, it was just a game, you know? You let bygones be bygones. What happens in the house to me? And I feel like a lot of other housemates just stays in the house. So I stayed in the house. It stayed in the house. And literally, when I saw him outside, uh, when I saw him at the hotel where the top six were staying, we just said, yeah, man, whatever happens in the house, stays in the house. It was cool. It was sharp. We're done. Done. And yeah, man, so I was really, I was really keen for the invites and everything. I just didn't expect the party to be that big. I, I like, I, I didn't, like, yo, it was bigger than I thought it was going to be. Like, jeez, jeez. But of course, for this turn up, you know, your boy had to call some Avengers to come with me. I couldn't go one man. I couldn't go one man. That's what I did. Went up and I saw Mountain Man. I said, hey, Mountain Man! Samba, Samba, Samba. Let's go. Let's go turn up. Let's go turn up. And yeah, when I was chilling with him, it was good chats, good vibes. Uh, the plan initially was to have other, to all come together as housemates. That's why uh, you guys, I saw you guys on Makeka's live when I was getting the gifts, asking about the housemates. Um, what I wanted is to get that together. It's just easier that way, you know? And so then we all kind of started speaking and saying, okay, cool, we're leaving now, we're on our way, butter, 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 butter. And bro, when we got there, goodness gracious, the love was crazy. I was not expecting that. Bro, I went to my sister, and I think for her, it was also a lot, you know? Like, it was a lot. Like, and again, I think it's one of those things where you kind of forget how big Big Brother is. Like, fam, I've never been dragged and pulled like that in my life. <laughs> you think? <laughs> but it's lit, bro. It's so lit. So shout out to my KK. Shout out to his family. Because his uncle was the, um, that, like, big guy. He was helping us a lot, man. He was, you know, directing the crowd, moving us. Da 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 da. My kicker came, grabbed my hand too, helped me through it. I was like, sure. And bro, when I was getting inside to the VIP, my sister nearly got kicked out. They didn't let her in because they didn't know who she was. And then she had to be like, oh, that's my brother, that's my brother. Like, yo, fam, hectic, hectic. Because she took a video of me, you know? So, yeah, what a movie. What a movie. And then, yeah, of course, every husband was there. Zizi on the beat, the Emma. Umza, Umi was lit guys, Yo, what a performance, what a performance, Umi is like crazy talented, my goodness, they would just took that mic fam, and then it's like, you could see like the switch, you know, just switched, and then to in performance mode, she killed it, bro. yo, she killed it, she killed it, now of course, it was good seeing everyone, it was good seeing everyone, good seeing Chiwenza, I haven't seen Chiwenza like in a while actually, so, it was just good to see him, Good to see my KK, of course. Good to see Sanaya, of course. But I see Sanaya quite a lot. Uh, good to see Z. Good to see Liam. Uh, good to see Ghost. Ghost was even there. Good to see, like, good to see everyone. Good to see Sammy. Good to see Owls. Good, bro. It was just vibes. It was just good energy, good vibes. We had fun. We had a, a, a dance thing. And y'all who keep coming for me about my dancing. Y'all don't know. The thing is, my dancing is actually futuristic. I'm actually setting the trend for the future. Y'all are just sleeping on it. And when the trend comes, when and when people start dancing like me, you're gonna regret it. You're gonna regret it. I'm telling you, you're gonna regret it. I'm telling you. So yeah, shout out to my KK. Shout out to Big Brother. Shout out to everybody. Bale was there, bro. I feel like majority of housemates were there. You know, majority of housemates were there. Yeah, I really had a lot of fun. 
I really had a lot of fun at, at this homecoming. Again, the crowd was awesome. Everyone who was in the audience, not, not the audience, sorry. Everyone who was there to turn up, amazing. Shout out to all of you guys. Shout out to the guys who danced with me when they were playing my favorite song. Ish. You know, it's when we turned out as well. Yo, shout out to you guys. Shout out, shout out. Shout out, man. Shout out. I had a lot of fun. Oh, but I forgot to say, there was a moment where I was a bit scared. There was a moment where I was a bit scared, eh? Because I saw my KK's video with that suit. I was just like, my brother. I don't know. What type of event is this? Is a formal? Because I was not prepared for a formal event. But I get it. He was a man of the hour. He had to stunt and he stunted with that suit, bro. But yeah, what a fantastic day. What a fantastic evening. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Life is good. Life is good. And I think that's actually how I want that's actually what I wanted to say. And no key how I want to end the stuff or end this video. It's just that the fact that we're seeing number one, this rap beef unfold right before our eyes <laughs> the fact that you are alive to see it you gotta be grateful you gotta be grateful you know like you're seeing stuff like this man crazy crazy times crazy times what a time to be alive you know and then even my cake is thing the fact that i was even able to like do that my life has changed to like that point where i have met like some really cool people amazing friends squashed beef like life's good that's good um yeah, and uh, this week was also unfortunately some bad news. Um, a fellow actor passed away from Paul, which is incredibly sad. Uh, man at 30 is crazy. Like, dude, he's so young. Like, he's so young and there's still so much life to live. So it's just like, it's, yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate and it's really sad. And I think it's moments like this is where you start to realize that actually with this life thing, you don't have that much time. You don't have as much time as you think you do. So please just try to make the most out of it as possible. You know, please. Like, if you're going to laugh, laugh hard. If you're going to work out, work out hard. If you're going to work, work hard. If you're going to love, love hard. Just do things like to the best of your abilities. And not this whole thing of like, yeah, yeah, when I got this, I'll do this. When I got this, I'll do this. When this happens, I'll do this. Who's to say you have that time? Who's to say by the time you have that, you'll be able to do the other thing you want to do? You know what I'm saying? We don't know when our time is up. And from what I saw with him, at least, is that he was able to do things he wanted to do. Like he was acting on Netflix and films and, and all that stuff. So I think that was a blessing he got to do that. Unfortunately, he couldn't do it longer. We don't know why, but that's life. That's, that's life, unfortunately. So please, guys, let's uh, try to live life a bit more. I'm sorry for ending this on a somber note. I didn't mean to. It just kind of just happened. But um, yeah, life is worth living. I think that's what I learned this week. Life is life is worth living. I think even when I was at my cakeest thing, there was a moment I was, there was a moment I was speaking of Sanaya and we we're just chatting and then we kind of just said like, yeah, when you stop overthinking things and just live, no more overthinking, just live. Just live. If you fail, you fail. If you fail, you fail. You know? So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching the video. It's been your boy T A K I, the human, don't forget the room. And yeah, here it is to embracing love, to living life, and knowing that you are enough. Till next time, it's been your boy. Peace.